Hey everyone, how's it going? I hope you're all doing well and that you had a nice weekend. You're listening to a bonus episode of the Culips English Podcast, and I'm your host, Andrew. Thanks for joining me here today for an English study session. In every bonus episode, I share some stories with you about what's happening in my life. Plus, I like to teach you an expression that will help you to unlock another piece of the English puzzle and just get one step closer towards achieving your fluency goals. The transcript for this episode is totally 100% completely free for everybody. And you can download it just by clicking the link in the description for this episode or by visiting our website, which is qlips.com. And by the way, on our website, you'll also be able to check out all of our other audio lessons that we've designed for intermediate and advanced English language learners. And we have hundreds of them. We've got tons of content on the website. Plus, you can learn about the membership options we offer, and we provide some awesome perks and bonuses for all of our members who support us and learn with us. So if you're interested in finding out more about that, just visit our website, qlips.com. So everyone, can you believe that it's already September? Where does the time go? <laughs> Where does the time go? Seriously, it felt like August just flew by. And in general, it feels like this year is flying by so, so quickly. I guess I say that every year, but that doesn't make it less true. I don't know about you, but for me, I couldn't be more excited to say goodbye to August and goodbye to the summer season in general. Now, like you guys know, I'm from Canada, and I absolutely love the summer in Canada, especially in my home province, which is British Columbia in the western part of Canada. The summer weather there is amazing, with high, but not insanely high, temperatures, just right, and most importantly, there's no humidity. Uh, maybe it's because I grew up in a place with very dry air, but now that I'm living in South Korea, where the summer is extremely humid, I find that the summer is just a sticky, swampy, hot, gross season. <laughs> sticky, swampy, hot, and gross. And it's really just unpleasant to be outside most of the time. Even at night when the sun goes down, because of the humidity, it always feels really hot and just yucky overall. Anyway, just like clockwork, when the calendar rolled over to September, the humidity here in Seoul also dropped, and we've been starting off September on the right foot with some fantastic, enjoyable late summer, early fall weather. In fact, when I was out for a walk the other day, I even saw a leaf fall off of a tree. So I think fall is just around the corner. And I'm so happy that September is here. It's always been one of my favorite months. It's a time when things return to normal after the craziness of the summer. Students and teachers are back to school and for most of my life, I've either been a student or a teacher. So I really have this routine of kind of taking things easy in the summer and then getting crazy busy in September. And at the moment, in addition to QLIPS, I'm also working as a university instructor. And that means that in September, I really return to my regular schedule and work routine. I think that September almost feels like the new year to me, it has that same kind of feeling because it's a time when I can hit the reset button on my life, maybe hit the reset button on some bad habits that I may have acquired during the summer. And then I can get back on track and get focused towards working towards my goals. Now that's a cool expression, don't you think? To hit the reset button? To hit the reset button just means to start something again from the beginning. 
So, you know, on your computer, you have a power button and a reset button, right? And you can hit that reset button on your computer to start the computer up again. And we can use this expression to talk about resetting our life and starting things over again freshly as well. Just like I want to hit the reset button on some of the bad habits I've acquired over the summer and have a fresh start. To be honest with you, I haven't really acquired too many bad habits over the summer. Maybe I just haven't been as disciplined as I would have liked to, especially when it comes to running. I've really sort of unfortunately fallen out of my running habit. The summer is a hard time to run here in Korea. The humidity, like I said, is insane. And also getting COVID last month really derailed my running and demotivated me. But just a few days ago, I registered to run in my first race since 2019. It's not a marathon. It's only a five kilometer run. And it's just going to be for fun. I'm not trying to break any new records or anything like that. But I was invited to participate in it by a colleague of mine. And I'm looking forward to it when it will happen a little later towards the end of September. So guys, please cheer me on and hopefully I can get an okay result and I can get back into the groove of running again and maybe even participate in some more races later on in the fall. So guys, what did you get up to last week? I had two highlights of my week last week and I'll tell you briefly about them. The first one was hosting the monthly Culips member live stream with Cassie. And we did that on Tuesday and it was a blast as always. So thank you to all the Culips members out there who participated in the stream and joined us. Now, if you're a Culips member and you weren't able to watch the stream live, but you would still like to check it out, then don't worry, you can see an archived version of all of our streams just by logging into your Culips account and you can check them out at any time at your convenience. Speaking of Cassie, everyone, we actually just uploaded a brand new simplified speech episode late last week all about Cassie's recent trip to the USA. I loved hearing her story about spending some time back in her home country, and I hope you all did as well. And just for your information, just so that you're not confused about the timeline of things, we actually did record that episode before I ended up getting sick and having to cancel my trip to Canada. So in that episode, you'll hear me excited about going to Canada, but that happened before covid canceled all my plans. So please just don't be confused about the timeline and just know that that episode was recorded earlier in the summer. And then on Sunday, just yesterday, in fact, my wife and I went over to visit her parents' place, my in-laws' place, and they live pretty close to us, just around an hour and a half away. And we try to get together at least once a month or so to spend some time with each other. Now, since my wife and I have both been sick lately, my father-in-law wanted us to eat some really healthy food so that we could return to good health right away and regain our strength. And can you guess what food he recommended? I'm wondering what a healthy food option is in your country. I'm sure people from around the world eat different things to restore their health and to feel stronger after being sick. Uh, in fact, I know this is true because in Canada, in my home country, when we're feeling sick, we usually will eat some hot chicken noodle soup to restore our health and to feel better after being sick. Here in Korea, uh, this is not the go-to. This is not the first option. And in fact, a food that is really popular for restoring your health and feeling healthy again is eel, grilled eel. You guys know eels, right? The really long fish that almost looks like a snake. That's an eel. 
So my father-in-law was kind enough to treat us to some grilled eel so that we could get some help, some power from the food, and regenerate our strength. Now, from a North American perspective or a Western perspective, I guess I could say, eating eel is not something that many people do. And I think, in fact, it would be very difficult to do in many Canadian cities. Maybe in some of the bigger cities, you could find eels. But where I grew up and in many places in Canada, I don't think you'd be able to find an eel at the supermarket or on a restaurant menu very easily at all. I think the reason why a lot of people in my country don't eat eel is because they're judging the book by the cover. And I get that. I understand that. Eels do look a little creepy, (laughs) almost like a water snake. And when you look at them, I think most Canadians don't think, oh, yum, I can't wait to eat that. However, I think those people are totally dead wrong because grilled eel is, in fact, one of the most delicious seafoods out there, in my opinion, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it every time I've had it. And yesterday was no exception. The meal was very, very good. And guys, if you've never tried eel before, the taste is really clean. It's just got a soft texture. And when you grill it over a charcoal flame and the skin gets a little crispy on the outside, it's just fantastic. It's a wonderful flavor combination. Actually, I ate it with some pieces of raw ginger and it was just perfect. So if you are from a country where eating eel is not popular and you get an opportunity to, in the future, don't judge the book by the cover and just trust me, it's very, very delicious. And I think the claim that it's a very healthy food is absolutely correct as well. Because after feasting on the eels, both my wife and I felt really great. We spent the rest of the day with my in-laws and we went to a nice cafe to have coffee together. And then we went for a drive to see some of the nice scenery around where they live. And all in all, it was a great day. But when I came back home, I was totally wiped out. Wiped out. Not physically wiped out. I wasn't physically tired, but just mentally tired. And that's because when I spend time with my wife's family, we always speak in 100% Korean only, which is fine. (laughs) We live in Korea, so that's natural. But usually at home, my wife and I speak a combination of both English and Korean. And for my job, I'm always speaking English. So when I have to change to this 100% Korean environment for the whole day, Then by the end of the day, I'm just tired and drained and my brain is ready to go to bed. I guess all of the extra work that our brains need to do when operating in a foreign language all day is just a very labor intensive process. But I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about, right? I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir here and maybe you're even experiencing a little bit of this right now as I'm talking to you in English. But anyways, I think this is just one of the joys of the language learning journey and it's something I was reminded of yesterday. It's time for this week's vocabulary lesson. I'd like to teach you about an informal but a very common expression that means to be very tired or very exhausted. And the expression is to be wiped out. Did you hear it when I used it in this episode? In fact, I said it just a moment ago, but just in case you missed it, why don't we rewind and go back and listen to when I said it a couple more times. When I came back home, I was totally wiped out. When I came back home, I was totally wiped out. So this is an easy expression, guys. To be wiped out means to be very tired or very exhausted. Now, I talked about when I was mentally wiped out, mentally exhausted, like spending the whole day speaking Korean, right? That left me 
wiped out, mentally wiped out. But you can also use it when you are talking about being physically exhausted. So if you spent the whole day doing hard physical work, well, then at the end of the day, you'd be wiped out. I've prepared some example sentences that will help us to understand how we can use wiped out in a natural way. So why don't we listen to them now? Here we go. Example sentence number one. I called Paul to see if he'd like to have dinner with me, but he said he was wiped out from work and just wanted to take it easy tonight. I called Paul to see if he'd like to have dinner with me, but he said he was wiped out from work and just wanted to take it easy tonight. In that sentence, the speaker phoned his friend Paul and he invited Paul to have dinner with him. You know, like, hey Paul, how's it going? Do you have some free time tonight? Would you like to eat dinner with me? And then Paul says, oh, you know what? I'd love to, but I'm so sorry. I'm just completely wiped out from work. I had a very busy day. So Paul refuses the invitation just by saying that he wants to relax at home tonight. Example sentence number two. Today's hike really wiped me out. When I get home, I'm going to bed early. Today's hike really wiped me out. When I get home, I'm going to bed early. Let's break that example sentence down. In that sentence, we hear the speaker say that he is exhausted from hiking. Okay, he said, today's hike really wiped me out. This means that he is physically super, super tired. And in fact, he said that he wants to go to bed early tonight. Example sentence number three. The kids were so wiped out from spending the day at the beach that they all fell asleep on the car ride home. The kids were so wiped out from spending the day at the beach that they all fell asleep on the car ride home. Let's break this final example sentence down. So in this sentence, we hear a speaker talking about visiting a beach with his family. And he said when he was driving home from the beach, all of his children fell asleep because they were so tired. They were so wiped out from playing at the beach all day long. Congratulations, everyone. You made it to the end of another episode. So thank you so much for getting an English practice session in with me. It's a great way to start the week. And I hope you all have a great week this week. I'll be back a little later in the week, around Thursday or Friday, when we drop another new episode. But until then, take care and I'll talk to you next time. Goodbye.